Dang. Yes, it is. We are now being recorded. This is our 1230 Wednesday class, and we're doing the 1970s. And today we're doing Elton John's Goodbye Yellow Brick Road. Wow, I bought this, wow, a long time ago. It cost me a whole dollar and 25 cents. Yeah, and this was in 1970, I probably bought it in 75, but the copyright is 1973. So this is actually the music that I used for doing this song. Up oh, here comes Miss Dottie, we will let her in. So what do we know about this song? All right, it's the title track on his 1973 album of the same name. Music by Elton John and his business partner. Uh, lyrics by Bernie Taupin. Rolling Stone listed at number 390 of its 500 greatest hits of all time. This was one of Elton John's biggest hits, surpassing his previous hit single, which was Saturday Night's All Right for Fighting. Yeah. Saturday night's all right for fighting. Yeah, good good song. Um, but this one surpassed it both in sales and in popularity. Now, if you go on Zoom, uh, not on Zoom, on YouTube and watch, there is actually a parody of Goodbye Yellow Brick Road done by a um, United Kingdom family called the Marsh Family. And from what I understand, they do, they do quite a bit of uh, parodies of, of songs. And they're, they sing in harmony. It's a mom, a dad, two boys, two girls, and they sing in harmony. And they're right, they're spot on. They're really good. And they did a song called Goodbye Pandemic Road. <laughs> and it's all about being locked in for COVID and all the things they're missing and when they're going to be able to go out. <laughs> So if you ever get a chance, you know, what get on YouTube and watch the parody Goodbye Pandemic Road by the Marsh family from the UK. They're very good <laughs> and very very cute. So, you know, just some fun stuff. Um, yeah, getting on YouTube, it's real easy to go down the rabbit hole and just keep going from one thing to the next thing to the next thing. <laughs> but that's okay because we get to listen to our songs and when you do listen to songs, I'm trying to turn you into more active listeners, what you're listening for is what kind of background or music style am I going to use for my song to make it sound good. So what you actually should be listening to first is what is the bass player doing? What is the drummer doing? Are, is the drummer coming in tip, 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 one, two, three, four? Is he doing, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight? Is he doing a one? Three, one, is he doing one and three? Or is he doing the backbeats, two and four? And the bass player might be doing one and three. So that's what you're listening for. What's the bass player doing? And is the bass player doing the same thing, just doing a, a, a rock and roll, boom, 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 boom? Is he doing more of a boom, boom, boom? Oh, Phyllis, I like your kitty. <laughs> boom, 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 boom. You listen for what that bass player is doing, and then when you're finding a rhythm, what you're looking for is to try to match the bass player and the drummer to the best of our ability. And we can also get a good sense of how fast the song is going. All right, so when you're looking at rhythms for a Goodbye Yellow Brick Road, guess what I did? I have one of these ready for you. Woohoo! So I have put together a, an eight preset pretty easy, an eight preset set of uh, memorizing presets. Do you need to do any of this to make the song sound good? Of course not. You can find a good rhythm and a good rhythm preset and go and just play. But this helps you learn where all your buttons are on the instrument and what they do. So that's why I do these things. Okay, it forces you to find the buttons and it forces you hopefully to listen to what's actually going on. Now, I also wrote up for you an introduction. So we get to play the piano introduction exactly the way Elton played it, because I wrote that out for you. Oops, I need to see these chords over here. 
Uh, it looks like I'm going to be flinging the intro. So I'm going to have you listen first, and then we'll go through and see if I changed any chords, and I didn't do much on chords. Pretty much what's there is absolutely perfect. And we'll talk about what am I adding or taking away or changing. And these are things you can take a, take a little pencil and mark where I'm changing things. Up here comes Winnie, and here comes Jerry. So... We will do Goodbye Yellow Brick Road according On to... On what style? Um, I'm actually starting with Love Ballad, believe it or not, Love Ballad at 110. Okay. At 110. So I'm upping the tempo and I'm turning a ballad into more of a moderate, moderately fast song. And I'm using rhythm preset here, number eight, which is piano plus electric piano. Why? Because guess what instrument Elton John played? He played piano. So I'm going to use mostly piano. You don't see me do this too often. Normally, I stay kind of away from the piano because if you make a mistake, it's pretty obvious that you made a mistake. But I wanted this to be a little bit more true to Elton John. So let's try this.
questions. You played it all on the upper keyboard. You didn't go yeah. down. I played it all on the upper keyboard. Yep. Yeah. I did not go to a lower keyboard on this one. I just yeah. added and subtracted things on the upper keyboard. Yep, that's a that's the first good thing to notice. The great song. I did add and subtract some things. And if you notice, yeah. I never once touched one of these things, did I? So what was I doing? No. Ah, never once touched a preset. No. No. All right. If you go to number three over here on your custom, over here with your foot. Yeah, I did it with my foot, and oh. I actually, I actually made a mistake oh. because I kicked, I kicked it twice over at the end. <laughs> yeah, I kicked it twice over, so my ending sound actually came in too early, so I had to play both sections on the same one. So yeah, it's like, wait a minute, that's not the right. Instead of going backwards, I just, eh, I'll just play it. But yeah, you got to be careful because if you kick it too hard, it goes two. And so I actually skipped one of them. So yeah, that's all right. That happens. And did you add strings to that? I did. I added lots of stuff. I added lots of stuff. I started with very little. And usually that's how arrangements are made. You start with as little as possible. Usually the bass and drummer. Whoop, here comes Mr. Owner. We'll let Mr. Owner in. <laughs> Went to number three. So we, we always start with small stuff. Now, if I go back to the beginning, I'm basically just on piano. I'm on love ballad, and I actually, I'm at 110. Uh, you don't have to take notes because I am doing this. I am, I am going to have this on Patreon for you. Um, and I'll give you some suggestions if you don't feel like doing this because, you know, this is not the be-all, end-all either. I turned off the Orchestra Plus. I went to Rhythm pre Preset 8 first. Then I turned off the Orchestra Plus. I turned on Auto Bass 2. I liked the uh, Bass 2 better. And I turned on my drum variation. So these are things you have to look at and listen for. Which bass player is going to be better and which drummer is going to be better. Now when I turned drum variation on, I also turned my drums volume all the way to the bottom, which means I'm not actually using my drum variation until I get to number 2 when I've turned my drum volume all the way to the top. So drum volume all the way down to zero because I have nothing going on here. And I did an edit style. So when you edit your style, you touch the top of the screen and all of a sudden you have these lines come up and it says edit style. And what it's doing is it's changing your genie in Orc Plus. Now we turned Orc Plus off. So four of those, or three of those I should say, we're not even using. So the genie is the one that I'm using. And I changed the genie to a piano, so the whole thing just sounded like Elton John playing the piano. It wasn't exactly what I would have liked, but it wasn't bad. Now, some of you that might have some of those beautiful pianist styles, try some of those and see if you maybe don't come up with something that would be a little bit better. But um, this was a tough one to find a really, 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 really good rhythm for this. John, where does it say edit style on the organ? If you go, you just touch the top of your screen. It'll say love ballad here. You touch the very top of the screen right by where the wood is. And when you touch that, it changes to edit style. And where edit style will come up in the screen. Oh, it does. I see yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. So now you can change those. If you oh. touch the first column, you can actually turn them all off from there. Okay. But the genie, we want the genie on, so you want it to say genie. Then you're going to turn that middle one blue, and you are going to scroll until you find something that's good in the background. In the uh, background. So if you listen to what's going on, I'm going to turn genie off for a minute, and we're just going to listen. This is your bass player. The hum is the left-hand chord. I just left my lower left tabs on. Now I'm gonna turn that genie on and you can listen to what this piano player is doing. And if I want him to do more, I can just do a fill in. It's not exactly what I was looking for, but you want a little bit of piano playing going on while you're doing this intro in this whole first verse. And then I also, it was a little loud, so the final one in that column 
is volumes. You have, it's, it'll say 100 or below 100. And so you touch that and turn it blue. And now you can scroll. And I wanted it to be a little less volume. So I took it from 100 down to 80. Wow. These are things that you can control. Holy cow. Yeah, so you can change everything that's going on in the background yeah. through your edit style. You can't change the pattern, but you can change the sound. This is kind of fun um, exercise to do at Christmas because you can choose any of your music styles or your rhythm plus orchestra, and you can change every single thing that's going on in the orchestra to bells. <laughs> and all of a sudden, you just have bells going crazy in your background, just fun stuff. But yeah. Dawn, does yeah. Rialto have a different name for Genie? Basic. For for, yes, basic. it's called Basic. Yes, Genie is called Basic. basic. Mm -hmm. yes. Okay, thank Genie you. Genie is called Basic. And that's in the Rialto, the Inspire, the Marquee, the Grand Marquee, and the Aria. They have Basic instead of the word Genie. Yeah. Dawn? Yes? If you change edit, in uh -huh. there uh -huh. and you change something else outside of that that goes away am i correct the minute i touch the minute i touch a different yeah. preset it's gone it's gone if you edit style if you edit the style make sure that you've got the the preset on that you want i used i used um, um love ballad rhythm preset or vintage eight mm -hmm. and that's my melody sound that has nothing to do with the rhythm then i changed what's going on in the in the rhythm I right. went into my edit style because the minute I touch another preset, boom, gone. Oh, so wow. If you edit style, save your, memorize your preset. Yeah. Memorize it. That's yeah. why we do these things, okay? Yeah. Then you memorize it. When, you, when you've got everything set up, and you can play it first to see if you like it. You see me hitting this a lot is because I want that piano player that we just changed to come in a little bit more. So that's also going to depend on your background. And if you like that, then you memorize it. Memorize A1 with style. I always do with transpose to. That's just automatic for me. And then turn your memorize button off. It disappears from the screen, and now it's in there. Don't touch anything else until you do the next one now. You work from the one that you're on. Don't press A2 until you're ready to memorize A2. You want to leave what you just did and work from it. Okay, so A1 is going to be the introduction, the entire first page, I think, yep. Second page, 108, line 2. Right when you get to that D-flat chord, or I should say right before you get to the D-flat chord for the blues, that's where you want to put A2. That's where you put A2. Then you work on A2. What did I do for A2? Oh, it, I did all kinds of fun things. You also want the blue oo-oos from the D-flat chord. One, two, three, four, five, Six measures are going to be octave up. So you want to put eight VA starting with the blues. You can actually start it with that pickup note C, the blues. You want to do eight VA and then you do dotted lines all the way across line three and all across the first three beats of line four. Not three measures, but three beats. Mm, really? Octave eight VA dotted line. Because you want to play that whole section up here. Then when you get to line four, where it says chorus, now you're going to put A3. The chorus is on A3. And you're also going to write loco. That doesn't mean go crazy, stand on the table, and dance like a fool. <laughs> it doesn't mean go crazy. Loco means go back to the original hand location. So if you played it an octave up for blues, 
ah, 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 ah. Then you get to the Goodbye Yellow Brick Road, you come back down to the regular location. Okay, that's going to be A3. Now, what did we do for A2? Remember, you don't have to take notes on this. You stay, at, you stay where you were. You don't, don't go to A2 until you're ready to memorize it. Now I want the drums back in because I went from this to this. So your drums all the way to the top. I added a string tab to my upper. And I put on an AOC harmony for my upper. Okay, so what I did, all right, let's go back. I'm going from boys too young to be singing. Whoops, it did go over. Up the octave. Okay, then you memorize that. If it played well, you memorize it. Memorize A2 with style, with transpose, shut your memorize button off, goes away. It's there. Now, so goodbye Yellow Brick Road is going to be A3. Don't touch A3, not until you have it set up. Okay, so what are we doing? We're going to go to upper tabs. We're going to turn off a string and turn on a different string. Turn off string 8, turn on string 16. We're going to go to the upper harmony and take the AOC and turn it off. Sometimes there's very little to change. But if you just work from one to the next, it goes pretty fast. So what am I doing now? I'm going from here to back to just a piano with a string. No AOC. But I have the drums and the bass and all that stuff going on. Now put a no chord, okay? Right after that D flat in line two of the third page, put an N, C, no chord. Just let your drums go. And then in beat three of the last measure, over that A flat note, you're going to put an E flat chord. E flat chord. And you're going to play the chord. You can still be on the no chord. Okay, you can still be on the no chord and play that E flat chord. It'll bring everything right back in. Okay, now when you get to that D flat, either at the end of line three or the beginning of line four, it doesn't matter. Now you put A4. First, if you liked what happened with A3, memorize it. Memorize A3 with rhythm style, with, harmon with transpose, not important. Turn your memorize button off, now we go on. You're going to do A4 at the beginning of line four. End of line three, beginning of line four. Okay, and again, you're going to write 8VA, which means octave, for ro o o d all the way, and you're going to put dotted lines all the way over the top of line 4, the first measure of line 5, and then the first measure of the, the, first, measure of the first ending. Then you want to write loco, where that rest is. Could so you show, go ahead. What, uh, show what the dotted, how you make the dotted lines, what you're talking about, dotted line? Yeah, you just make it, you write 8VA right uh -huh. by that D flat, and then you just do dot, 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 dot. It just re reminds you that everything under the dotted line is going to be an octave higher than normal. Okay. Is, is, it an, is it 8VA over the F, did you say, in, in the first ending? It goes yes. all the way to the A is still over the F, yes. Okay, and then, and then and when yes. you get to the rest, you stop. Yep, 
After that, after that, you want to put just make it like a little bracket. Just put a little line down, like that's the end of it. And okay. then you write loco. That oh. means now when we go back, our hand is going to go back to regular position. And that's where you're also going to do A5. So let's see what we did in A4 first, because we haven't memorized that yet. So I'm going from A3, which was um, finally decided. Okay, so what are we doing for A4? More stuff. Okay, now underneath the C for your final, your first ending, if you want, you could do, you could do the full five three fingered chord. So under the C, you have an A in the second space and an F in the first space. But you didn't play them at the same time. You played like a roll. I whatever. rolled it, yes. I, I, I did an arpeggio. Kind of like what we learned when we did guitar strums. Yeah. You just start at the bottom and roll it up. You can also write that in for second ending. You can do that right now and just write that in the same thing. C. Under the C is an A, under the A is an F, and just roll it up, okay? Just three so, notes? Just the three notes. C, A, F, from top to okay. bottom, but you're gonna play it from bottom to top. Right, right. So what did we actually do for A4? You're not gonna believe this. All I did was press A2. Press A2 and memorize it. <laughs> what? Yeah. You said A4. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm repeating one of my presets. Okay. So all so you're going to do is press A, a press A2 a four, you're pressing and a memorize four. it into A4. Oh, wow. Ah, see, there's some fun things that you're going to learn how to do that in here. So you're mm -hmm. going to memorize that into A4, then you're going to leave it, and then we're going to do A5. Where's A5? The end of the first ending. So when we go back to the beginning... You're going to start again with A5. So I actually wrote A5 at the end of my first ending, and I wrote it again at the beginning of the song so that I, it reminded me. A5. So what am I doing different with A5? Okay. I'm going from the ah-ah-ahs, the last line. Now I'm going to go to A5. Oh, yeah. I'm changing the background up a bit, aren't I? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Great. I'm adding things. So I turned my drum variation off. I, I wanted a different drum pattern. I'm turning on the orchestra plus, so I'm getting lots of stuff. Upper harmony. I'm turning the AOC off again. But now I'm adding some strings for the tabs so that I have a thicker sound. I just don't want the AOC on yet. So you'll get all of this. You'll figure that all out. Then you play it and see if you like it, and then you memorize it. Memorize A5 with style, with transpose, not necessary, but I always do it, and then turn your memorize button off, and now A5 is done. Okay? Mm -hmm. And A5 sounds like all the way to second page, page 108. Right there. You all you already have A2 written there, don't you? Yes. The place you have A2, you're going to put in A6. Same place. <laughs> and then memorize it again. Y nope. Oh, nope. No. You're going to write A6. A6, oh. you're going to have some new directions. Okay. Uh-oh. No, don't remove you. Okay, good. I thought I removed somebody <laughs> accidentally. Okay. No, A6, you've got to do some other things. Okay. But you're going to write A6. So the same okay. place you have C A2, you're going right. to also change to A6 when you're playing. That just tells you in the music where you are. Mm -hmm. So then your drum variation is going back on and your harmony is going back on. That's it. So then you, you're, you're going from five. Now we're going to go to A6. 
right there where it says chorus you already have c a3. or i'm sorry a3 written correct right you also and want to put in a you want to do a3 comma a7 okay so the same place you change to a3 you're going to also change to a7 so what are we doing there ah it says press a5 oh okay so you press a5 and then you memorize it to a7 Pretty easy. Dawn, so are you still going up the octave for that? Yes. Yes. Every okay. time you do that, that section, you're going to go up the octave. And Every for the time. harmony, was it AOC? Um, yes, and there is AOC on it. Yes. Okay, thanks. Yep. By the chorus, Dawn, I thought you said that was loco. Loco means go back to the original yeah. position. Right. Right. Yeah, no, we have that when we go back to this section. When we, and we've got 8VA, 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 then we get back to the chorus, that's where it says loco. So right. yeah, 8, 7, so you do loco again. back to loco. Okay, so what I did there for A7, I pressed A5 and memorized it to A7, cool. And then I played that whole thing until, and that's the one I skipped, by the way, because I, I kicked it twice. <laughs> and then when you go to the third page, line, the end of line three, where you have A4, you're also going to write comma A8. A8. Okay, so you're going to change it for A8. And yes, that's also an octave up. Eight, eight, where, Dawn? Huh? Eight, eight was where? The same place that you have A4. A4. The end okay. of line three, beginning of line four on the last page. And then what did you do for A8? A8, I turned on drum variation and I put my AOC back on. Okay. So a lot of this stuff is subtle. So if you're not doing everything here a lot of things you're going to be doing is adding strings which on a lot of the organs is that organ button like your easies and you're going to be adding and taking off the aoc that's going to be a lot of what you're doing when you when you do this if you're not memorizing presets what other rhythms work on this okay that was actually my favorite i thought this one came out the best this was tough this was a very difficult one to get something that really felt good. Um, sweet Rhythm was actually, I almost like that one a little bit better, to tell you the truth. I just didn't want to go through and redo everything again. So where is Sweet Rhythm? It's under Rhythm and Blues. And if I up that to 110 and start it the same way, let's see. I'd have to go in and Okay, there's already a piano in the genie. And if I take my drummer off. And then when I get to the drummer. So that worked pretty well too. So you're going to find some that are going to sound better than others. But these are things you got to listen for. First, listen for your drummer or your bass player. Because that's going to really determine which one of these backgrounds works the best for you. And if you don't care for the piano, use an organ. My goodness, you can never go wrong with using an organ. And especially your jazz organ, because your jazz organ or your rock and roll organ is going to give you a little more percussion. So it's going to sound, uh, it's not going to sound so muddy. But an Dawn, organ, you can never go wrong with an organ. Don, on a sweet rhythm, what tempo did you use? Same what tempo, tempo, 110. 110. Yep, okay. same tempo. Yep. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, also, eight beat standard. Eight beat standard. 
I'm not sure if that's in your pianist or your guitarist. I think it's in your pianist rhythms. That's a good one to try. What about oh. the 10? <laughs> On the 10. Okay, did I look for that? Oh, boy. I did, and I can't remember where I wrote that down. I did actually write down stuff for that. Basic rhythm and blues. All right, basic rhythm and blues with alter I also tried. Soft rock also works. Um, shoot. You know, I wrote it down, and I can't remember where I have that. Uh, I had hold it. On. Hold on, I might have it over here. No, I don't. Darn it. I had to answer the phone. Did you did you put A8 the same place as A4? Yes. Yes. Okay. yes. A8 right. and A4 are in the same spot. Okay. Um Wow. Um, I'm not sure which one on the 10 right now. Okay. It's funny. Hey, hey Dawn. I, I did um, write it down. <laughs> and I can't remember where. <laughs> Dawn, in the beginning, yes. you said love ballad. Is that the same as 50s love ballad? No, that's different. 50s love, ballad sounds, no, 50s love ballad sounds like this. Right, the six eight. Yeah. So Sorry, love, ballad, love ballad sounds like this normally. OK. okay so would I just do a smooth? Like piano or something, or Smooth piano song? four four might be okay for you. Yes, uh huh. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks. Yep. And again, make sure that your bass player and your drummer. And when you up it to one hundred and ten, sometimes these backgrounds take on a whole different personality. They do. Like you might even want to try your soft and easy four four, which would be smooth. Let me try this because this might be what I used on the easies. Would be your smooth, full band. And let's up it to 110. I, this might be what I actually did, by the way. Let me try. Eh. That's fast. Let me slow that down. This slow. I'm going to cut it in half. This actually could work. Yes. Okay, that is your your smooth full band or on the other organ soft and easy, no variation, easy 4/4, four, four, but not at 110. Cut it in half, 55. Okay. Okay. Okay, but, thanks. And you get the same feel. Good question. Yeah, I know. I, I knew I wrote these down. I just can't find them. Don, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Forgive me for this question because I'm new to this preset stuff and memorizing. What happens after you've got all these A's in there? Do you, when you turn off the organ, does it all go away? Or nope. When you turn off the organ, they all stay. That's a good question, actually. Yes. When you turn off the organ, they all stay. All right. But... If you do a hard reset, they disappear. So what you want to do is if you like what you did, then you get your stick out. Oh. Save everything to your stick so you don't lose it. Oh. Okay. Okay. So that's what you do. Then you stick your stick in, and then you go to the window and go USB, save presets, because you want to save your work. I see. Save your work. So once you have everything in the organ, you can turn it off and work on it every day and not worry about it going anywhere. It's not John, going you, anywhere until you John, take them out. If you if you do a hard reset, everything's gone. If you, but if hard, you just do a soft reset, just on the you reset. Just do a button, soft reset. That won't do anything. It won't take everything out. Nope. All right. Good. Nope. Only if you do a hard reset, which is either through the window, total reset, or the five finger hard reset. It'll take everything out. So I always recommend save, save them, okay? Okay, thank you. We don't you. have to worry about it. You save presets. And again, you can name it pretty much the same way. You name your file. You name the file. I got a, I got a question. Yeah, uh, go ahead, Ken. On, on uh, intro, mm -hmm. uh, under like uh, the first, it starts with an A, and then you've got the F and the C underneath it. Are you going to roll those up? 
Nope, those are being played. Nope, those are not arpeggios. Yep. Okay. Yeah, no, on the intro, you're just. I didn't think. Block chords. So you're playing them, all three of them at the same time. Yeah, you play all three of them at the same time. Yeah, well, that's yes. what I thought. That's, yeah, you're not doing a roll. You're only marked, doing the roll right. at the end. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yep. And also, Dawn, yes. you had no changes to chords or anything? The only change for chords that I have is page three. The E flat. No, the E flat is fine. Line oh, yeah. three, finally decided my future lies. The F is good for two counts. Wait, Don, are you on page uh, 109? 109. And which line? Oh, I've got another one in here too. Um, 109, line three. The okay. F is good for two counts. Beat okay. three, which is over the A for sided. Put an okay. A minor. Alligator minor, C and A. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. I added another one too. Look at I'm finding more. Okay. Yeah. Line two. If you back up on line two, I already told you this one. Yeah. This is the E flat that I told you. Right. Over the last A flat that you have, the A flat and the G, put an E flat, elephant flat, over that A flat. And a no chord over and the rest. And a no chord immediately after the D flat. Wait. So play the D flat. This is the end of line two on page 109. Play the D flat, do a no chord, and then over the A flat, add an E flat chord. Right. One more. I had one more. Oh, where did I put it? I've got so many notes is my problem. Go back to page one, page 107. This one's not that important. It sounds fine without it. Third line, third measure. The G minor is good for two counts. Over the B flat eighth note for hold, put a B flat chord, butterfly flat. And that's it. I'm pretty sure wow. that's it. Yep. Uh, yeah, there's no, the chord changes, the chords are good in here. Yes. On page 109, yes. third line, where did the uh, A minor go? First measure, third beat over the A eighth note for decided. I got it. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, these chords are good. They did a really nice job with this as far as as far as picking chords. Dawn. Dawn. Go ahead. Uh, hi, this is Joanne. Hey, hi. I've got a question on page 108, uh -huh. the fourth line. Yep. What do those double lines go to? The double lines just mean that that's the beginning of a new section. That's all like that the means. chorus. Like yeah. the chorus. Yep, okay. that's all that means. You're going into the chorus. That's it. It doesn't mean you go back to anything. It just means you're starting a new section. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. John. Good question. John. Yes. When you gave this to us back in 19, you changed a couple of notes. You changed the last E flat on the first page to yes. an F. Yep. Haven't gotten to that yet, but yes. Oh, gonna, okay. Yep, okay. Yep. You are absolutely correct. Let, we're, let's go back in and change a couple of notes. Now that we changed the couple of chords, let's change a couple of notes. Uh, page 107, second line. First measure, the E flat. Cross it out and change it to an F on the first space. I think you'll find that it sounds way better. And same page, last Sorry. measure on the, on the last line. Cross out the E flat and change it to an F on the first space. Okay. And Dawn, let's I'm see if I did anything else. I don't. That last one, Dawn. I think that's it. Please repeat the end of line two. End of line two. On which page? Page one. Page one, the end of line two. Nope, that's that's the nope. The F goes in at the very first measure. What was the following change? The following change is the fourth line. Last measure, cross out the E flat, and make that one an F right at the end of the page. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. 
Dawn? Yes. On page 109, mm -hmm. third line, first measure. Where yep. does the A where does the A chord go? The A minor goes over the A eighth note for sided. Oh, A minor. A minor, yes. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Thank and get your and get all your flat chords in there, right? Mm -hmm. and you'll be fine. A flat chords. Yeah, you know, your D flat, your E flat, your A flat. Yeah. B flat minor. Those are kind of tricky sometimes, even though they're still they're just one note. That's all they are. All right. Okay, we will do fingering. Um, this time now that you've got some of your changes and you know where they are, now you just listen. Okay, I'll play it one more time because we, we're good for time. So. No, why? Oh, it's because I'm on the wrong one. There we go. So not a lot of additions, simple little things. Those of you that aren't memorizing presets, find the right background. You might want to pull out some of your accompaniment, just pull some of that out. And then you're working with whatever sound you're using, piano and strings, and your AOC. So those are the things that you want to look for if you're not planning on doing any of these 
other changes. Those of you that can use this to learn how to push the buttons on your instrument and learn what does the drum variation do? And listen and just see what it does. What does the auto bass one and auto bass two, what do they do differently? And listen and see what they do. Because that's, um, that's basically what this is for. Yes. When you add the AOC, it sounds like a waterfall in the background. Oh, seriously. Wow. <laughs> wow, cool. <laughs> I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. <laughs> it's a good thing. Good thing. Okay. All right. I see you used a lot of fill-ins. I well. love you. Um, I like to overuse fill-ins. I am the queen of overusing fill-ins. You see my thumb go on that touch bar all the time. Yes. And uh -huh. you have to be careful with that on certain rhythms. Like if you're using Hawaiian Paradise, don't overuse your fill-ins. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, people that watch me in concert, that's the number one thing they notice is, your thumb's always on the touch bar. Yes, it is. I have a tendency to love kicking in the extra drummer, you know, kicking in the fill-in. So, yeah, I'm, that's, that's just one of the things that I do a lot of. <laughs> it's fun that you guys fun. notice all that stuff. Good. Yeah. Oh, Carolyn, you're Carolyn Crutes here. Thank you. Um, I didn't see your name before. Nice to see you. <laughs> yeah, good to see you. Having a good Thanks. vacation? Oops, yeah. So, yeah. 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 Everything's good. Yeah. 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 Things are good. Good. Excellent. Good to yeah. see you. Miss Thanks. you in class. But it's Miss good to see you on Zoom. Zoom is okay, but it's not the same. I know, I know, I know. We do the best we can on Zoom. Yeah. Oh, it's all good. That no, it's great. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Next week, and yes, we're gonna still do fingering. So stick around if you need fingering. Oh, we do Blondie next week. Oh, wow. Now I have done this in concert, but I sang it, so it's a little different singing it than it is playing it. So I will try it and see if we can do it. If I don't think it's going to translate, because it may not, then we'll move on. John, the next song in this book is Heart of Glass. Yeah, that's Blondie. Oh. If yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah, no, I've done okay. I've done that in concert as a as a singing song when I did when I did songs with heart in the title. That was one of the songs I did. Um I will see if I can translate it to the organ. If I can't, we'll move on to Hello, It's Me, but I'm going to give it a good college try for Heart of Glass. Is that okay. Debbie Harry? Yes, that's Debbie Harry. Uh-huh. Debbie Harry with Blondie. Fun song. It's a fun song to dance to. It's a fun song to sing. I'm not mm -hmm. so sure it's going to be a fun song to play. We'll try it. <laughs> if I can't quite get it, we'll move on to Todd Rundgren, Hello, It's Me, but I'm going to try it because I really would like to you know, yeah. work on all the songs that are in here. I see it's got two times you go to Coda one and then you go to Coda two. Yeah. You got, well, look at all the pieces you <laughs> You're running all over the place. Yeah. Yep. Sorry. Yep. You're going to have all kinds of fun things. Yeah. What, play three times, Coda one, Coda two. Yeah, fun stuff. <laughs> so we'll look, at least we will learn the roadmap. If we don't play it, we'll at least learn how to do a good roadmap with Heart of Glass. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. Excellent. Stick around. Let's do Goodbye Yellow Brick Road. Let's do fingering. Those of you who don't need fingering, thank you so much. Have a fabulous week. And we'll see you again next time when we do this. Um, and watch, watch your emails for all of our fabulous Zoom classes. I think Robert has a song of the month coming up um, tomorrow. Oh, yeah. yeah. So he always does stuff like this too. So anytime you can learn one thing, and apply something to your instrument. You know, that's that's when it starts to get really fun. And that's why I try to push you as, as hard as I can without pushing you away. That's one thing I don't want to do. I don't want to make it so yucky that you don't like it. But do what you can. If you don't like it, pick a good rhythm, pick a sound, and play. And just have a good time because that's what it's about. All right, you guys, get your Thanks, pencils Don. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Don. You guys are welcome. All okay, right, G1, G1, G1. B flat 2, B flat 2, D4, E5, A1, 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 C3, C3, D4, 
The F that we wrote in is a 1, G2, G2, B flat 4, B flat 4, B flat 4, C5, B flat 4, G2, F1, 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 A3, F1, high F5. D1, B flat 4, B flat 4, B flat 4, B flat 4, D1, D1, last line on that page, D1, E2, G1, A2, 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 C4, C4, D5. The F that we wrote in is a 1. Let's go to the next page, 108. G2, G2, B flat 3, B flat 3, B flat 3, C4, D5, C4, G2, E1, F2, 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 G3, E1, F2, A4. Check mark. All right, that's because you have to go that octave up. C3, D flat 4, F1, G2. C5, B flat 4, A flat 3, G2, F1. D flat 4, F1, G2, check mark. Now you're going back to original position. C2, F5, 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 C2, A1, E4, C sharp 3, C sharp 3, C sharp 3, D4, D4, C sharp 3, D4, B flat 2, F1, A2, check mark. D1, A4, 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 B flat 5, A4. Let's go to the last page. G3, D1, D1. E2, 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 F3, G4, F3. A5, 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 F3. D2, A1. Next line, E4, 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 E4. F5, F5, F5. D3, B flat 2, F1. A flat 3, A flat 3, G2. Third line, F1, F1, F1. A2, A2. C3, F5, 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 D2, F4, 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 G5, E3, check mark. D flat 4, remember we're going up the octave again. F1, G2, C5, B flat 4, a flat 3, G2, F1. Last line, D flat 4, F1, G2. First ending, C, A, F, all in a row. And it's 5, 3, 1 from top to bottom. Second ending, same thing, C, A, F, and it's 5, 3, 1. Questions? Yes. Hi, Dawn. On Hi, David. Uh, line two, page one. Okay. The whole thing? We change, we change, no, we change the D to a four and the F to a one. Uh huh. What was the E? The E flat was what? crossed out. Oh, it just crossed out completely. Yeah. That's why yeah. I'm. We're, yeah. No, the E flat no, is. Cross it out and replace it with the F. 
Yeah. Oh. Throw it away. <laughs> Doop, throw it away. <laughs> gotcha. Don? I was just confused there. Thank you. That's okay. Yes. Don, you mentioned pushing the custom button number three. Uh huh. What was that for? That was to get to next preset. It'll say next preset at the top, and you can do it on touch bars or foot switches. And what I did is choose foot switch, and, and the arrow that's going to the right, I clicked on. I turned it from off to on so that whenever I touched my foot, I'm moving these. Okay? okay. So I didn't have to touch them. I could just do that. All right. Move Thank you. Foot, just move my foot, and it changed all my lights for me. Did everything. Thank you. You're welcome. Amazing. Yeah, it is amazing. It's fun. These things really? do a lot of fun things. This is a computer and a half. Yes, most oh. definitely. It amazing. can do an awful lot of stuff for you. It can make you sound fabulous, and it'll make your songs come to life. And that's why this is such a fun hobby. I played this song, like Pam said, back back when, way back when, I don't know, maybe four or five years ago, um, in one of our in-store classes. And we did not delve into it this deeply. And we just chose a background and played. And so it's fun to go yeah. back and redo and do new stuff with it. So I'm having a good time with all these as well. So, you know, thank you guys for allowing me to do this for you. It's fun. <laughs> Dawn, yeah. do, you send, do you send these uh, changes to Robert now? No, the changes I, the only changes I sent to him are this that's what i meant the intro and the preset page yeah. the extra Please. changes like taking the e flat and throwing it out and putting it yeah. in an f right. that you have to get by either listening to class or catching it again on patreon okay so you send these things to him yes. after this class yes as soon as i so get the recording as, what happens is the recording kicks back to my computer because this is all on my account so yeah. the, the recording comes back to my computer, I forward it to Robert along with these attachments. Okay. And then he puts not only the recording, but the attachments to the recording on Patreon for you. Okay. So that's why it takes him two or three days. Yep. Yep. Okay. All yep. righty. Thank you, ma'am. You're welcome. Don. He's a very busy guy. He's got, he, I mean, he takes care of all of our Patreon stuff, all of our Zoom stuff. You know, he takes care of He's the national vice president in charge of sales, so he's got to make sure that that stuff is being sold. He's got to make sure that means he's got to kick our butts. <laughs> so yeah, he's got he's got an awful lot of stuff to do. Not only that, he's a manager of a store, so he's got his own store to run. So I give him credit for all the stuff that he does take care of for the company. So he doesn't he he allows me to do my job, which is teach the class. And I don't have to deal with posting everything. He does all that. Don? Yeah. Um, you said that custom number three is to be able to change the foot switch to the foot switch, the advancement of the foot switch. You can also do that through the window, correct? Yes, ma'am. You can also do that by going into your feature clear and scrolling until it says next preset. So you just keep scrolling, 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 and it should say someplace... Next preset. It's at, uh, on this organ, it's page six, and it says next preset. If you touch it, it brings up that same screen that you can get to from number three over here. Okay. Yep. Thank you. You're welcome. And again, you it, save that, you know, so you can save it. But I, I actually, I don't think next preset saves into the presets. I think you do have to put that on every time you turn your organ on. That is a control that doesn't save to the preset. All right. Any other questions before we say goodbye and have a fabulous day? Yeah, Dawn, I've got a question on my Easy 10 here. Okay. Uh, where it has the three buttons on the left-hand side says bass, style, and lower. Yes. Okay. Yes. So I noticed when I put push one of the buttons, it says an ORC plus after it. So if you're saying don't use ORC plus, you, you would take that all the way down? That's your accompaniment. Yeah. Yeah. Now, you got to be careful with that because when you take out accompaniment, you're taking out pretty much everything except your bass and drums. 
Yeah, I don't hear the chords a lot of time if I take That's, it too long. It's in there, yeah. Now, you also, on the Easy 10, you should have one that says lower. Yes, it says Lower bass. is your chords. Lower is the chords. That's your chord sound. So okay. make sure that one goes up so you can hear your chord sound. The other one can come down. You maybe don't want to turn it all the way down. Yeah, okay. Yeah. For the bass and the style, are you saying? Or just keep your bass up. Style, okay. style can go down. Okay, all right. Yeah. Because sure sometimes lower goes up so you can hear the chord. Yeah, sometimes when I'm playing, it just, you know, it's too much of the background or whatever. I don't know. Yeah. And it just, you know, I'm a marquee. I, just, I that, that's at, in Florida, but up here I got the easy 10 now. So, yep. Yep. <laughs> so okay. you take your style and make it go down just a little bit. Okay. All that'll right. That'll balance better for you. Okay. All right. I'll try that. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> yep. Okay. You Thanks have... a lot, Don. You're a great teacher. Oh, I love doing this. Unbelievable. I couldn't yeah. do it without having you guys show up to class. So thank yeah. you. <laughs> thank, thank you, son. See you later. <laughs> now you right, keep it you guys. up. Bye. You know what's happening? You know, every now and then, um, if you like what's happening, shoot an email to Robert or John Riley and just let them know that you're having a lot of fun, so that we can still keep doing Zoom. Because sometimes yeah. it, it's sometimes it things sit and they don't know if it's going good or not, because they don't come to class. They don't attend these classes. So if you're yeah. having a good time every now and then, um, just make sure you say, well, thank you so much for having Zoom. Please don't get, let Zoom go away. And that just reinforces that we will continue to have Zoom. Yeah, okay, we will do. <laughs> amazing that you can have that many people on at one time. Yeah, isn't it? Isn't it? I, I think it's amazing too. Totally. People can go up north and, and do their snowbird thing and can yeah. still come to class. I think that's amazing. I yeah. know. The best. <laughs> Thank you so much. You're welcome. Bye bye. Bye. Thank you guys you. are awesome. <laughs>